the restoration of our half-timbered houses was initially about repairing the timber frame. In this video I show how towards the end of the restoration work we took care of those half-timbered parts that were still filled with the original wattle and daub structure. There were smaller and larger areas that had to be repaired and the walls then had to be plastered again. The structure consists of vertical stakes made of hardwood and horizontally woven thin branches of willow or other wood. The stakes were inserted into holes at the top and swung into a longitudinal groove at the bottom. The bottle was then plastered with a mixture of clay and chopped straw in such a way that the material penetrated into all the gaps in the vessel. This surface was then topped with finer material, originally only with clay. Later revisions were done here with lime plaster, always in thin layers and flush against the beams. The youngest layers of plaster, made of a very thick lime plaster from the 19th century, had been very crumbly and almost fell off by themselves. When I removed these layers, I found that these walls had been repaired repeatedly over the centuries using the same technique. If something broke out, simply fresh clay and straw was inserted. For example, when this small window in the former western gable was no longer needed, it was simply closed with the same material. So I thought I should continue this tradition and repair it in the same way. Behind the wall cladding I found some crumbled remains of an old rattle and dark wall and took from there the clay. I soaked the stuff in water for a few days, then it was processable again, as it had only been stirred together yesterday. By the way, yesterday was probably 600 years ago. With this material I was able to close the gaps and cracks in most of the half-timbered walls. For the repairs of smaller cracks I used material without straw. It was important to let these repairs dry thoroughly before the top coat was applied. I used commercially available clay plaster for this. I never thought that this material could be processed so comfortably. It adapts perfectly to the existing structure. At first I wanted to apply a thin layer of very fine lime plaster later, but was so pleased with the effect of the clay surface that I didn't do it in the end. Incidentally, I had previously treated the timber beams with linseed oil. I indicated the small window previously shown in the clay plaster by carving its outline. Another type of window was created by omitting the plaster in one place. I like such insights into the structural past of walls and have also created them in other places. This is how it looked in the end. The floorboards are the original construction boards from the 14th century. At this place I was able to show them as they were, since you don't walk on it much anyway. On the first floor most of the wall fields were either hidden behind well-preserved modern plaster or were no longer preserved at all. There were only a few visible, originally preserved parts along the middle of the southern wall. However, 
with considerable holes because the window situation had been changed here several times. But one field offered itself as a true original restoration, since parts of the old vettel and daub were still there. I made two ash sticks for the stakes and fit them in the original places. Then I got willow and other branches and braided them in between. I had heard that the material should be soaked over winter, but I was able to handle it without soaking. In the end, an amazingly tough and resilient wall was created. It became clear to me again that this type of wall filling is really not a makeshift measure, but that it is a process that had been perfected over the centuries and optimally adapted to the timber framework. Now clay with straw had to be put onto the battle. This time no longer with historical material, I had run out of it but with fresh clay from an embankment on a building site, which I was able to collect nicely crumbled by the winter frost. Straw already chopped up can be found abundantly on fields at harvest time, where combine harvesters lose it. The wall took two weeks to dry completely. Then I was able to plaster it and finish everything. The window in the middle has been reconstructed based on partially preserved findings. Overall, these repairs were fairly straightforward, but time-consuming. Apart from that, a new building with these methods would also be easy to build in a contemporary manner.